Ready? Alpha. The team at Air to Their Aviation have asked me to come down here to Adelaide to test out this, the Pipistrel Alpha, what is it? Pipistrel Alpha Electro. The only, only certified electric single engine aircraft flying here in Australia. And they've asked me if I want to fly it today. That is not sent yeah, That's free. It's a <laughs> Just... All right, we're going to do a quick demonstration now so you can see how loud or not loud this aircraft actually is. I'm about two meters from the front of the aircraft. They're going to start it up and they promise that they're not going to run me over when they do that. Ready? standing here in front of an SR-22 when that was powered up, like my aircraft that I fly, I would not be able to be having this conversation with you right now. That's crazy! What is an electric plane? Well, it's basically, it's an aircraft just like you're used to any other aircraft. It's a training aircraft, a two-seater, really good for student pilots who are learning how to fly, but it doesn't run off carbon-based fuel, it runs off electricity. Now, of course, there's, well, where is the electricity being made and what's being used to make that electricity? That's a whole discussion aside from this, but to power this aircraft, the only thing it needs to get off the ground is a charge. It's as simple as plugging it into the wall socket mm. and basically just plugging it so into... So just here on the front. Just so into you... here, we plug it in. So for those of you that are sort of familiar with electric cars, a very similar concept. So roughly how long then would it take to charge up? It takes just on an hour. And look, a lot of factors affect that in terms of the temperature and things like that and, and obviously state of charge. But, but generally speaking, for about an hour's flying, it's about an hour, an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes worth of charging. It has two, two large batteries in it. Um, they're an inline um, battery system as well. So if, effectively speaking, you're looking at about a 400 volts worth of batteries. And if we want to convert that to kilowatts, uh, the plane's output is actually about 58 kilowatts in flight. So it's a fairly powerful little system. All right. All right. Doors closed. Doors closed. Yeah, the, the little. No, no, the little silver pin here. Uh, yep. Pull that down. Pull that, that disengages down. it. Then carry the weight down. fairly quickly on the runway. The acceleration is quite substantial because there's a lot of torque from the electric motor. Yep, okay. So if you've driven an electric car, it's like that. It's more or less instantaneous. All right, not waiting for it to spool all up. All set. Off we go. RPM's alive. Airspeed's alive. Safely airborne. That was quick. Now you mentioned when we're coming to the top of the climb that you're going back to a kilowatt setting. I'm obviously yeah. used to going back to an RPM setting or a power setting. Yep. There's obviously a few little things like that, but apart from the intricacies of flying an electric plane, it's no different than if it was an avgas powered aircraft. That's correct. The handling is I'm told exactly the same as the petrol powered Alpha. I haven't flown one, but I've flown lots of other LSA. It handles no differently to any other LSA like aircraft. It's still basically, you know, you've got climb power, you've got cruise power. We're setting a power setting rather than a, in kilowatts rather than a horsepower or an RPM. So okay. it's affecting a similar sort of prop RPM. Probably about 30% power that yeah. we're cruising at. 30% power? Yeah, and we're ticking along at just under 90 knots. 90 knots is uh, pretty much the cruise speed that you'd expect? Yeah. Yeah, yep. so 90 knots uh, indicated. What sort of climb rates could you get from this aircraft as well? Because it's quite um, torque efficient on the ground, you were saying. It is. You know, on the takeoff then we had um, around about 12 to 1300 feet a minute 
of climb. That's a pretty good climb right now. It's a nice cool day, so the density altitude is pretty good. It helps, yeah. Do you want to have a fly, Stefan? Yeah, yeah that's we, all right. Yeah, we've yeah, got yeah, a few I minutes. We're on track for the damn wall. Handing over. All right, my aircraft. Taking over, my aircraft. So we've still got 21, 22 kilowatts set. So 20 to 25 is the cruise power setting. Okay. But, you know, we're still at 90 knots, so that's plenty. We don't, don't need to rush in. Um, we're at just under 2,000 feet, 1,800 odd feet. Just descended a little to give us a little bit more vertical separation. With that From the other aircraft. Yep. Yep. We've still got 66% battery state, so we've got plenty of battery there. And we've got uh, five miles to run to the dam wall. Okay, so I'm just aiming straight yeah, ahead here. just for the, um, a little bit easy right. So there's right. a sort of bald hill in front of us with trees coming down to the right. Yep, David, this is a big deal for me. This is my first time ever flying an electric aircraft. Well, with people like us who love aviation, to, to know where it's it's likely to go in the future, you know, there'll be more electric power plant development down the line. Correct, Adelaide at one It's nice to be at the start of it. It is, yeah, yeah, at the beginning. The I'll take over the aircraft from you as we're approaching the damn wall, if you like. When yeah, you sounds good. Call. Sounds good. I want to ask you, and be honest, realistically, are we going to start seeing more of these aircraft in airports in the future? Because they're very, sort of not prototype, but they're very new at the moment. Is this the way that you think student pilot training is actually going to go? I certainly do, Stefan. If I've got anything to do with it, we'll see them all over the place in the coming years. But yeah, certainly the, the business calls uh, for you know, thorough research um, and proof of concept really has been done. But what we're, what we're doing now is really to, to I guess, showcase the aircraft and its capability within Australia and hopefully we can then build you know, build our market and uh, see lots more of them around. Alrighty. All right, your aircraft, David. Handing My over. aircraft, taking over. Capital city right there and we're stooging along a little electric aeroplane and most people would be none the wiser. Yeah. As a general aviation is so underrated sometimes, isn't it? Oh. The privilege to be able to do this is... It is. Alright, we're one. starting to set up now for our final leg. Okay. Oh, power comes back now. Just about gliding from here. We've got to slow down below 70 knots for our first flap extension speed. Okay. Speeds below 70. Flaps to approach. Zero nine three eight, runway two on left, clear to land. Two on left, land zero nine thirty eight. Uh, so on final, since I pulled the power, our battery state hasn't changed. We're not using fuel. It's like the fuel trucks following us. No carburetor heat, of course, to worry about. Landing checks complete. the AR lines on Western Apron, request taxi. Electro 0938, uh, Crawford ground, g'day. Taxiing back in, we haven't had the opportunity to surprise people by the propeller oh. stopping. Yeah, it's it's right. Right. thanks, taxi <laughs> to run up a Fox truck. So there you go, I flew an electric plane. Now do you think we're going to see these sorts of electric planes at airports across the world in the future? Well, you may find that a little bit hard to believe but probably in the same way that you may have found it hard to believe 10 years ago that we'd have electric cars pretty much being mass produced on the roads like we do now. All I think is that environmental reasons aside, even if these aircraft, all they do is bring down the cost of flight training for students in the future, gets more people into aviation and allows more people to achieve their dreams of becoming a pilot, then surely that's a good thing. And there's a helicopter starting up behind me, of course.